be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, if you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Now, water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Follow our Twitter account at Wow Show. It is Way of the Warrior. Eric O'Brien along with Sean Desai, Paul Cicchini, and Ken Evans. UFC 147 is this weekend in Brazil. Only two Americans going to be on the card. Rich Franklin is one, and our next guest is the other. 15 and one, undefeated in the UFC, taking on Fabricio Verdum. Joining us online right now, Mike Russo. Mike, how are you? Good, Eric. How are you? I am wonderful. Uh, before we get started, I, I, I need to know if we're actually going to be friends. So, are you a Lou Malnati's guy or a Gino's East guy? A uh, uh, Lou Malnati's guy. <laughs> UFC 147, it is in Brazil. You're one of two Americans on the card. How excited are you to co-main event this deal? Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, you know, what a great opportunity and, uh, you know, what a, a great uh, chance to really, uh, you know, show myself and show that I belong amongst the top heavyweights, you know, uh, this Saturday if I can get a win. And if you get a win, as you've said, this catapults you into the upper echelon. On paper, interestingly enough, he only has five more fights than you. Does that surprise you? Because I think most fans would think he has a ton more fights just because of kind of your career and his career. He's kind of been in the spotlight a little bit more than you have. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you look at his fight, I mean, uh, for Fabricio, he's fought, you know, top level, uh, you know, competition the whole time. Um, you know, I think he's a, he's definitely a lot more experienced. But, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great opportunity. I'm excited. I mean, I've trained really hard, and uh, I'm ready to go. When you looked at his fight with Roy Nelson, I know a lot of fighters seem to lose uh, their fire when they can't put a guy away, and you fight very much like Roy Nelson does. Do you think that's going to get in his head if he tries to go out there and he said he wants to finish you? If he tries to finish you and he can't, is that going to be your way to capitalize on this fight? I mean, yeah, that's our plan. I mean, I... I'm just going to go out there, uh, you know, and uh, keep my hands up and just, uh, you know, try to um, not make too many mistakes, really try to pressure them and uh, get them tired. And, uh, you know, just weather the storm like the first couple minutes. You know, I'm expecting them to come out uh, real tough. You know, that that first round, you, you know, uh, you know, he's fighting in his, uh, you know, hometown and, uh so I'm sure he's going to be, uh, you know, really trying to put the pressure on the first couple minutes. It being his hometown and knowing that you have power in your hands to stop him, do you think his first move is to get you to the ground, or is he going to try his Muay Thai like he did with Roy Nelson? Yeah, I'm thinking he's going to try to, to stand up, you know, because he looked pretty good against Roy. Um, um, you know, work the, get in the clinch, work uh, knees and uh, stuff like that. So that's what I'm expecting, uh, you know, probably some kicks, you know, something to really try to look good in front of, uh, you know, all his... Uh, all the Brazilians. You're four and zero in the UFC. I saw you fight when you fought in Chicago. Explain a little bit about what that extra level of it's not really. I've never really heard a, a fighter say that it's a hometown advantage. It's more of a distraction. Would you say that that's true? Yeah, I would say it's a double edged sword. I mean, it, it's cool in one way. You don't have to travel because that always sucks. But uh, <laughs> you know, because you know you're right there. You could sleep in your own bed. Uh, that was nice. But then you know, I think it's definitely a lot more pressure just because. You know, all your friends and family and, and all the other things that go go along with it, you know, more media and uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mind this at all. I know I'm the underdog. Uh, you know, he's expected to win. To, uh, I, I like this situation. Because it takes the pressure off you. Because if you're the underdog and expected to lose, you can kind of go out and do your game plan because you don't have to worry about that burden, right? Exactly. I know a lot of these guys in the UFC don't really walk away from their career. If you make this win, is there a plan for you to do this as a full-time job and not be a cop, or will you always do both? I mean, obviously, if the right opportunity uh, presented itself, um, you know, um, I could do, like, take a year off, uh, leave of absence, which I'd like to do, and just train full-time for a year. You know, I just want to get through, uh, you know, this Saturday, and then, uh, you know, maybe could do something like that just to really focus, you know, because, I mean... You know, if you could get a win over Fabrizio, I mean, you know, he's like fifth, you know, fifth in the world, so it'd be huge. Now, Mike, you get this win on Saturday night. In your dream matchup, who would be the next guy you would like to fight? I haven't even thought about it. I'm just focused on him. Uh, 
it doesn't matter what I want anyways. It's pretty much, you know, uh, the UFC just tells you who you're going to fight, and, and that's that. You've never once had a thought and looked at a guy in the division and went, wow, that'd be a really fun fight to have? Um, obviously, I mean, any of the top guys. You know, that's why I train and uh, have a great opportunity coming up. And, uh, you know, I mean, if I could beat him, it's going to be someone uh, real tough next. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter whoever. UFC 147 in Brazil this weekend. You and Rich Franklin, the only two Americans on the card. So are you guys like in your own locker room with a lock on the door to make sure that nobody messes with you? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to be up there tonight, walking, uh, walking down there. I mean, I, I'm sure everyone's, you know, they, they, you know, I'm, uh, they're going to hate me. So, but that doesn't matter to me. I would recommend not wearing your I Heart Chael Sonnen shirt to the ring, though. Yeah, no, I brought my bulletproof vest back home, so I'm going to throw that on there. <laughs> Mike Rosso has joined us. The fight is this weekend. Co-main event against Fabricio Verdum. Going to be an awesome fight. Cannot wait to see you in the octagon and see your uh, hand raised and see what's next for you, Mike. Have a wonderful weekend and good luck. Hey, thank you. You too. And when we come back, we will break down a little MMA news and perhaps we'll uh, continue with the injury watch. It's going to be a much shorter list if we just tell you who's still able to fight in the UFC. Because at this point, there's about four guys who are still cleared. It's Way of the Warrior. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook tonight. There are fights tomorrow. There are fights. Results as they happen. Twitter and Facebook search while show its way of the warrior.